Hello, everybody. Welcome again to New York Talk. This is the Scan Report. We are looking ahead this time to Tuesday night's opponents, Cambridge United. Uh, worse start than us, which takes some doing. Uh, we have Jack from Under the Abbey Stand with us. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, all right. Everything, you know, football aside is fine, but it's uh, yeah. it's been a really, uh, really tough uh, start to the season. Yeah, absolutely. Let's dive straight into that. We 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 sit in here kind of feeling sorry for ourselves, but you guys are just on the one win, uh, one one point, sorry, one one point so far this season. Is that is that a fair reflection of the performances so far, or are you, are you, is it has it been that bad? I'm afraid to say it has been. Yeah, um, there's been a big turnover of players from the back end of last season with retirements, with players going back to parent clubs and and, and players moving on generally. Um, we've we, we recruited 12 new signings in in the summer, uh, some through the loan market and some, um, you know, uh, kind of on permanent deals. Uh, a few of them uh, have been questionable so far and have, we've, we've got a long list of injuries already and the performances have been way below par. You know, we're no strangers to this league. We've been in this league long enough that we should be, you know, know what's coming and, and we're nowhere near it this season so far. And it, it's a shame to see because we worked very hard to get to this position and, and at the moment we look, uh, especially Saturday's game, it looks like a kind of defeated team, really. There was a real lack of belief and, and yeah, certainly some um, some people who need to kind of check the check themselves really and and have another look at uh, how they're approaching the game. I think. Mm. Gary Ronks has been there since about March last year. Just the two wins, which obviously which came obviously came last season. How is where where is his position now? Because obviously with the start of this being his players that he's brought in, is is he is he under a bit of pressure? It's it's a funny one. The the, the fan base is quite split. I think there's more people who are Gary Monk out, but. There are a lot of people who are kind of, you know, citing that he's not the only one to blame. You know, the players need to take some responsibility. There's a lot of people directing their um, distaste towards, you know, the recruitment team and the scouts. You know, there's one one name in particular that's always bandied about that people kind of jump on the bandwagon and, and seem to blame who is the, you know, runs runs it kind of behind the scenes there. And I think, you know, football fans can be quite fickle. So I I, I don't know. I, I think he's really on borrowed time. You know, there was a feeling yesterday at the end of the game, real disappointment from fans that there was just no kind of drive, no, you know, no intent. And they really didn't look good enough. So I think, yeah, I think he's really got to t- turn this around and very, very quickly. And I think it has to start on Tuesday. But they're just, just that lack of confidence. You can see it all the way throughout the pitch, you know. And I think they're maybe lacking a bit of a leader. Um, mm. And, yeah, there's just there's something missing there. And, and, and it's horrible to watch, really. Yeah, if I can just take you back a little bit to the Mark Bonner situation. Obviously, his link with us was this all interest rather than fans. It was all going really well until the kind of link with us. And from outside, it all seemed to drop off a cliff after them. What, what kind of happened post the Rotherham link? Well, it's it's an interesting one because there was conversations going on for quite a while, and then you know it was pub it was publicised, and he came out and and said, "Yeah, well, we've been speaking to the club, and you know, whatever for whatever reason, it didn't go through." And I think in any situation like that, it kind of upsets the apple cart, doesn't it? And I think there was, you know, probably in the dressing room there were questions about whether he wanted to be there, and then you know you go on a, a short bad run, and suddenly the pressure's really on because, you know, you've already spoken to someone out of the club, you know, you might be on to better things. He's a manager really early in his career. Mm-hmm. So, like, I think that's kind of like gold dust in the football league when you've got someone who's got potential and, and then they can get snapped up. But I think it did kind of upset the kind of the balance in, in, in the changing room and maybe he lost a little bit of kind of, you know, authority because of that. And then, yeah, it all unfolded not in the best way really you know he he's done he did fantastic things for the club and it was it's sad to see him go so quickly and then after that him going and neil harris coming in and then neil harris mm, jumping ship yeah. to go to millwall it, it it really upset a lot of fans and a lot and the players and and monk came in and did a fantastic job but actually he did he did what he needed to do he kept us safe mm. and that was that was the priority um and you know, there's a lot of promise around him. There are now questions, you know, as I said about football fans being fickle. He, you know, he was out of the game for four years and people yeah. are now questioning, you know, how, how much of an effect has that had on his ability to kind of manage the team in a, in a situation like this. So always questions to be asked by football fans who are, you know, annoyed. So we'll see, but it, it, it's a shame. And yeah, Mark Bonner is sorely missed. I, I, I'm, an, I'm very much in the belief that Mark Bonner in charge of yesterday's team would not have done anything differently. We would still be getting, mm. you know, soundly beat. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to pre-season before we come on to the sort of the next on Tuesday. What were the pre-season expectations? Was it was it always expected to be a pretty tough season? 
Yeah, definitely. League One's harder than it ever has been, actually, mm. this year. There's not really that case of a basket case. I really hope for Reading's sake that they manage to kind of, you know, sort them sort that out off whatever's going on off mm. the pitch because, you know, it's nice to see a team, a league full of, you know, teams that are able to compete and not having things like that. So hopefully that levels itself. But yeah, this is the toughest the league's been. So we were always expecting it to be hard, but survival was absolutely the aim. And I think it's mm. it should have been a realistic one. I think, you know, we we were very very late on signing a number nine and, and we, we we lost you know our firepower in Gasan I had me Fajiri Okunabire, you know Sam Smith and ha- uh, Harvey Nibs have, have been out the door as well for a while so like we've lost that kind of focal point you look back to Ironside and of course Paul Mullin and we've always had that kind of you know since we've been back in the football league someone who can get you that 10 15 even more goals a season you know and that that's the reason and we seem to have lost that and then bringing in Dan and Alundalu. Um, who's not got a great goal scoring record, you know, right at the end of the window, didn't really fill fans with much kind of, you know, encouragement really. So yeah, I think we've recruited a little bit woefully and, and, and we played well in pre-season uh, for the most part, you know, against some, t- some tougher teams. And then we lost our last pre-season game. We played one on a Friday and then the next day on a Saturday and put the kids out and got beat 6-0 by Colchester. And then, we then played well against QPR in the League Cup, but lost. And, and since then, it, yeah, it's been rapidly unfolding and the performances have got progressively worse. Uh, I think the confidence has gone. You know, the, you look back to the one point that we did get, we were 4-1 down at home to Blackpool and pe- brought it back to 4 all. So, there's, you know, there is there is ability in that team somewhere, um, but mm-hmm. they, they haven't found the right formula. And I wonder, you know, I think if Tuesday isn't all three points, Gary Monk might uh, might not be in a job much longer. Fair enough. Is there any players to watch out for? You know, it's been a tough season, but is there any kind of sh- shining stars that anything? <laughs> I was really looking forward to telling you about Dan Barton, um, who's a, a youth prospect um, who came through the ranks. And this time last year, you wouldn't you wouldn't have heard of him really because he's mm. he's very young, come in and he's hit the ground running. He's fantastic. And yesterday he's uh, gone off. Uh, with what looks like quite severe ligament damage, uh, we've got quite a long injury list already. Okay. Uh, it's a re- it's a real worry. We've, we've signed Gary Gardner, who's never featured yet. Um, we signed Ryan Lofty, made his first appearance yesterday for about twenty minutes and looked all right. But yeah, we've we've got no Shane Lavery, who would be the goal scoring threat. That's the person I would have mentioned. I'd love to mention Mamadou Job. He's done his ACL, so he's out for the rest of the season. All these players I'd love to tell you about. Um, <laughs> one, ones that ones that can play, um, who, who you might want to watch out for. I mean, Elias Kachunga has Football League experience. Mm. Having watched a game like Saturday, it's really hard to recommend a player when oh, yeah. everybody played so poorly. Brandon and Joku mm. as well. That's sort of a player to look out for. Brandon and Joku, young young player, came through the new scheme, looks amazing, got his first professional goal now. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled for him. Fair enough. And how will Tuesday night go? Um, I'm, I'm not expecting a classic. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so difficult because, like we spoke earlier, Gary Monk hasn't found the right formula for this team and, and he's still fiddling with mm-hmm. formations. And And yesterday, we pre-game, we were all trying to work out who was playing where. And, you know, and we've got a really good young player in Liam Bennett as a right back. And Gary mm-hmm. Monk, played three different people in that right back right wing back position yesterday none of them being him one of them being Sully Kai Kai um and at this point it's yeah I I honestly don't know what version of Cambridge United you're going to see you know your guess is as good as mine so I think Gary Monk will be under such pressure that he's going to have to go for it I think it'll be quite an attacking team and I think you'll see Cambridge hit the ground running or at least try to from the off, which I think will leave, leave it to be quite an open game, actually. So I think there could be, you know, it could be a few goals in it. Um, but Cambridge United have just been so easy to kind of cut through this season. So I think, you know, on the counter and and things like that, I think we'll be quite exposed. I'm going to go for a two-all draw. I think United are going to pull something out. I, I, I can see a scoring because, you know, there has mm. been attacking threat there. And and Alundalu actually looks good to his credit. You know, he's come in and, and done a bit of a job. So, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see that. And interesting to see if Ryan Loft features as well. You know, having a bit of height and someone to aim for in there might give us something. So I'm going to go two-all. I don't, as I say, I don't think the quality will be good, but it, it might be, a, you know, at least there'll be a few goals. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Thank you very much, Jack. We'll put the links for the Abbey Stand in our notes, show notes. So do go check out these guys as well. Thank you very much, Jack, for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank um, you. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you all next time. And as always, up the millers.